only mock draft, and I got nine right this year. Last year I got ten, uh, but I had a feeling I was like I should just put Jamar Chase, and mm. then he had the Bengals colored shoes when he mm-hmm. came out, and I was like, oh my god! And I put Penny Sewell because that's what my that's what you would do better, right? Right. But uh, we'll get to it all, and we'll start on in that in three, two, one. Did the Cincinnati Bengals mess up by not getting Penny Sewell? I know, I know. Jamar Chase, Joe Burrow, that was a fantastic connection, but you saw the scar on his knee. (laughs) That and more in the 2021 NFL Draft recap here on the Audible. It's Cecil Lammy and Sigmund Bloom, and we'll get to Cincinnati in a little bit, but we go alphabetical on these recap shows, Bloom, and that means Baltimore Ravens time, and that means, all right, Baltimore, What are you doing to add to Lamar Jackson's arsenal? Well, Rashad Bateman is pretty good. Size-speed combination is there with Bateman Bloom. To me, he always plays larger than his size. You know what I mean? Because what do they list him at, like 6'2 or whatever? But it's like he plays like he's 6'5". So he plays a lot larger than he is. A refined route runner, which is very rare for college prospects usually college prospects aren't aren't like that so with bateman there okay sandy uh let's see what they can do together back in the first round of course with kansas city's pick a duffy away and i totally hack that i'm sure uh penn state edge rusher round three ben cleveland guarded georgia brandon stevens cornerback smu in the third round tylen wallace from oklahoma state interesting wide receiver they pick up at the fourth Sean Wade, cornerback, Ohio State. I didn't think he'd fall to the fifth, but there he is. Dalen Hayes, edge of Notre Dame in the fifth as well. Rounding out with another fifth rounder. It's been Mason fullback, Michigan. But really, we're going to focus on the first two picks, those two first rounders, Bateman specifically. Bloom, what did you think? Yeah. Ravens drafts are always really good at being transparent, right? We can get a pretty good idea of what they think is important and where they want to invest based on their holes or their points of emphasis, the direction of the team. And this team actually had multiple holes. You know, they trade Orlando Brown, which creates a hole, by the way. Today they sign Alejandro Villanueva to take care of that. So It stings, Bloom. It stings. Yeah, it does, but it's where the Steelers are. We'll talk about that. (laughs) We'll talk about that. Uh, We have plenty of time to get through the AFC North. Uh, Where's the points of emphasis here? First, Rashad Bateman. And look, I get Rashad Bateman as the best player available. You know, when these picks are coming up on the live show, you know, we're thinking, is it offensive line? Is it edge? Is it a wide receiver? Because they have that many holes. And it ends up first being wide receiver Bateman. And look, Bateman is something that they're missing. Uh, uh, Some size, great route running prowess, great at the catch point, just reliable. Just that guy on third and seven that Lamar Jackson can really count on to be open even when he's not open and make a play. And then we can might as well talk about Tylen Wallace here. Tylen Wallace is a player that can win in the air downfield. Look, bottom line, they're not liking what they're getting from Miles Boykin. So they're going back to the well here. Greg Roman's talking about we're going to pass more. I don't think this is going to be a 2020 Bills kind of metamorphosis. I don't trust Greg Roman. I don't think of Greg Roman in the same vicinity of Brian Dable as an offensive thinker. I think Greg Roman's good at one thing, and they're having trouble because he's good at basically creating one kind of offense. But obviously, and uh, Trevor Sykema from the Draft Network, great draft coverage, really setting the standard for draft coverage, uh, said that they can marry more of their passing to the wide receiver to their passing to the tight end and mix up the concepts and looks. Now, can Greg Roman do that? I mean, certainly Bateman gives them the opportunity to do that. For fantasy, I hate it, obviously. Uh, yeah, there'll be more pass attempts, but it's just uh, the worst place you could land for fantasy for a wide receiver. This is why they only got Sammy Watkins in free agency. Then you get uh, Odafe Owe. And uh, look, w- what's great here is the ceiling. Oh, my. Uh, maybe right there with Jalen Phillips for if he hits. I mean, the, the, he's an absolute prototype. He's still very much at the beginning of his curve of football development. They need, he's the basically the only credible edge rusher they have. Tyus Bowser, Jalen Ferguson, I guess. So he's going to step in, even though he's 
very much a work in progress to unlock all of those tools because he wasn't producing zero sacks last year. I think three in his career, but defensive will pick. Um, then the next pick they have, because they don't have a second because of the Orlando Brown trade, uh, they get blamed Cleveland, Mahler. He's going to step in, uh, compete with Ben Powers right away. He's going to help with the running game. Uh, and, and again, T. Martin, by the way, the new wide receiver coach, getting to work with Wallace and Bateman. Stevens, uh, upside project, special teams. Wade sees Wade's another player that we'd say, where would Wade have gone in the draft last year? Right. Right? A much higher regarded prospect coming into this year than after this year. So, you know, it's a classic Ravens type pick. They get Hayes, developmental pass, developmental pass rusher. Um, Mason, you know, this is your slobber knocker, fullback move, tight end type. Find someone, hit them. By the way, they also traded down in this draft and got the Cardinals' fourth round pick next year. It's always nice to sock away. A, a point that was made, uh, especially for a team like the Giants, we'll talk about this in the NFC East, you know, that they wanted to have some draft capital pushed forward or it's beneficial for them too because they really like taking players that they get to see in person. That's the combine. You know, and that's why they focus on the senior bowl. So, hey, pushing some draft capital forward, uh, never a bad idea when this was not a typical draft. Uh, they addressed their right tackle as we speak, basically getting Alejandro Villanueva. They do address edge, uh, and we'll see where this team is. Uh, it, for the first time since we can say the Ravens address some of their needs, but they still have needs left over. They still have vulnerabilities in a division that is very much up for grabs. Uh, up for grabs and up for grabs for UDFAs are Darius Washington yes. is Will Parks, basically. Yeah. Like, he's a Swiss Army knife yep. of a safety. I had pegged him as kind of a late-round prospect the Broncos should be interested in, and they grabbed a couple of safeties, and it's a Broncos show. We'll get to their safeties, and one I really, really like. Uh, but I thought our Darius Washington should have been drafted. So hell of a pickup here for yeah. the Ravens undrafted out of their UDFAs. Who do you like, Bloom? Yeah, that's it, that, Washington's story here. I mean, he was going to be very coveted. Uh, TCU, look, t- stop me if you heard this story before. He's really good at football, but he's small. Okay, <laughs> yeah. you can work with that. You yeah. can work with that when it's a uh, defensive back who plays in a way that exceeds. And we're going to talk about this when we get to Asante Samuel. You know, just plays in a way that exceeds their limitations because you have a small defensive back and you say, well, that can be a problem. Do they do the things that make up for that? Washington does. He has the versatility. So an excellent UDFA pickup for those Ravens. As I'm taking a swig of my water, that's not ever clear or moonshine bloom. <laughs> it actually is water. But anyway, it's Cincinnati time. Maybe I should be swigging some booze and boozing it up for Cincinnati because, all right, Jamar Chase. Fantastic. I, I mean, the argument against Penny Sewell, if there is one, Bloom, because to me it's Penny Sewell all day, uh, but the argument is we'll just get rid of the ball quickly. They have such a connection, like that instant chemistry. You could see that flourish in a similar way, not because they had that connection, but just look at what Stephon Diggs for, did for Josh Allen, right? Now, Joe Burrow is much more nuanced as a passer than Josh Allen was. Uh, but now you put in Jamar Chase, get rid of the ball quick. Okay, that's fine, unless he's on his back, unless he's not protected. You saw the new jerseys, awesome. You saw the big scar on Joe Burrow, which is the, the Tiger King or Lion King or whatever, sitting on his throne, like huge-ass scar on his knee. I would have taken Penny Sewell. It is Chase, and it has nothing to do with Chase, Bloom. It has everything to do with protecting your asset, your most valuable asset, which is Joe Burrow. Chase is the perfect wide receiver. What's he do wrong? Well, he's the best wide receiver in this class. Seriously, what's he do wrong? Yeah, yeah. Uh, It doesn't catch everything? I don't know. I, I mean, I, I get Shades, even though he's a different player, but Shades of when Calvin Johnson came out of Jaw Tech and it was like, what's his negative? Right. I don't know. <laughs> you know, like his shoes were untied once. I have no idea. So with Chase, that's it. And, and let's break down Chase. I'll save the rest of the guys, interesting players. They're all right. But let's talk about this. You guys brought it up on the live show. Uh, any... Now that you can reflect on it, you know, less than a week later, Bloom, what do you think about the chase pick? Well, we'll watch this comparing it to Detroit again, talking about Sewell and Decker in Detroit and how much does that allow that offense to overachieve and does chase make more plays for Burrow or is Burrow still, and we'll see how Riley reef plays. And some of the talk was, well, they like the tackles. This was a very deep tackle class. He's, I think in all of the time, 
that we have been doing. We're going to talk about one during this AFC North show. And all the time we've been doing the Audible draft recaps now, 16 years, I think we're doing it, talking about. The show started with the draft recap. Right. Yeah, it's the it, New Year's Day on the calendar for the Audible. I cannot remember so many third, fourth, fifth round tackles, well, third, fourth round tackles that you could say he could start uh, and, and maybe even be a good starter in time. So they're going to go back to the well in the second round? No. No, they're not going to go to back to the well in the second round and get a tackle. In fact, they traded down. They traded on a, uh, out of a spot. I think they could have got Tevin Jenkins in that spot, right? Yeah. Because uh, the, the Bears move up the pick after that. Uh, so we'll see. Now, Chase represents, it's Joe Burrow's team on the throne, right? It's Joe Burrow's team. And you've got this one shot with this quarterback that you want to have for his entire career, basically. You can get his favorite receiver. This team runs a ton of three wide sets. And see, we have these debates, right? And setting up these debates as these binary choices really overshadows the actual nuance to the game of football, coverage or pressure on the defensive side, right? Or it's like weapons or or time to throw in clean pockets, you know? But Chase is the best wide receiver prospect since Amari Cooper. Fair? Yeah, that's fair. I mean, you could we could wait, do the tail of the tape with Chase and Cooper. The point is, we have not seen a wide receiver this good, and uh, the only negative maybe is that he's not Calvin Johnson size. That's it. Uh, if you were to do a prototype, you'd stretch him out a little bit and just have more length and more ability to extend his catch radius. But he can work all three levels of the field. He can win as a route runner. He can win when the ball's in the air. He can win after the catch. He plays with incredible toughness, balance. Uh, strength, play strength. See, we don't talk about play strength for wide receivers a lot. Jamar Chase has terrific play strength at the wide receiver position, in addition to skill, in addition to tools. Uh, I they see the over-unders. we got to talk player props all the time now, Cease, right? We even talk about player props with the draft. Right. Did you make, did you make any money on the draft? Well, I did some appearances on Vissen, uh, uh-huh. and I was like, this is very interesting. Like, that mm-hmm. is very, very interesting. Um, and it's fun, man. It's fun. Yeah, it it's is It's legal. Fun. Yes, it is. And I think Jamar Chase's over-under is already set at about 1,100 yards. So that shows you expectations. It shows you the kind of player he is. It shows you this offense going to set him up to succeed. And we'll watch. I mean, again, what we love the draft is it sets up all of the opening chapters to these stories that are rich. Certainly watching Chase, watching Sewell, watching Burrow, watching this Bengals franchise will be very interesting. Yeah, let's get to the rest of the guys not named Jamar Chase and Jackson Carmen, guard Clemson, second round, third round, Joe Asai, edge from Texas. I thought he might go a little bit higher in the third, but whatever. Fourth round, Cameron Sample, edge from Tulane, so back-to-back edge players there. And it wasn't a great edge class. We can discuss that, Bloom. Uh, Mm -hmm. Fourth rounders, Tyler Shelvin, defensive tackle, LSU, Deontay Smith, offensive tackle, East Carolina, Evan McPherson, a kicker, Florida, Trey Hill Center, Georgia, Chris Evans, hard charger, right? Mm -hmm. You know, like every team wants uh, Chris Evans on their roster. We'll see. Running back Michigan. And then the player that reminded me most of Trey Hendrickson, who reminded me most of Derek Wolf when I saw him at the Shrine game years ago. That is my man, Wyatt Hubert, falling all the way to the seventh. This is a fantastic pick. Honestly, wish the Steelers would have got him. I'd been talking about the Broncos getting him. Wyatt Hubert, seventh rounder. Just everyone, you know, put a pin in it. Watch this kid get after the passer. Yeah, lots of things to put a pin in here. Jackson Carmen, so they trade down. They don't take a tackle. They take a absolute road grader at guard. They take someone who's just going to knock people down. It's like a and, piece of machinery watching yeah. him play, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> seriously, a plow, you know? Um, <laughs> what you like here also, go watch the video. I binge on the the call, sees the videos when they get the call. Mm-hmm. I tear up. It's wonderful. It's an atomic bomb of human emotion that builds up for years and years of release when these kids get the call. And I can say kids because I'm 45, okay? Uh, you, you like that. And that's good for Joe Mixon. Um, Joseph Osai. I mean, on one hand, what you like about Joseph, Joseph Osai is he's the kind of player that makes those plays that light the fuse of the defense or the crowd. You know, just endless energy, boundless, boundless energy. We talk about this edge class, isn't that good? You know, he's not an edge rusher you're going to hang your hat on winning one-on-one against NFL tackles, whether it's because of size or tools, things like that. I'm not quite sure where he fits in this defense, but 
I understand in the third round saying, hey, we can get somebody who's going to lay it all out for our team and make plays and make plays that he shouldn't be able to make just with energy and hustle. Uh, sample they get is a power end, and they did a really good job developing Carl Lawson as a power end. He's now with the Jets. Hendrickson replaces him, et cetera, et cetera. They get a kicker, the only kicker taken in the draft. Uh, and I think Austin Seibert's got... And there was a long there. snapper run. Think about that. I know. I, know. <laughs> I remember when the Steelers took a long snapper. Uh, um, we have, in, in Hill, you have a guy who played in the SEC. Hey, let's see, you know. I mean, how many... See, could you go more than two or three picks in this draft without an SEC player being picked? <laughs> right. Uh, um, so, certainly, at least addressing the offensive line there, maybe someone that can project as a center for them. Uh, Chris Evans is fascinating because he actually has really good pass game skills. He barely played for Michigan this year. Barely played. It's odd for a player to get drafted at all when on his own team, it seemed like he was falling out of favor. But there's physical tools there. There's pass game skills there. And I think Travion Williams probably should be looking over his shoulder. We'll talk about that in UTFAs also. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and you mentioned Hubert. Um, and you look at these late picks and, yeah, you like a guy who you know is going to hit his ceiling. We don't know what his ceiling is going to be, but that's the kind of player they got in the seventh round. That's the kind of player they got in the seventh round. What about undrafted? You mentioned it. You teased it, industry yeah. term. Puka Williams yeah, from Kansas. Little guy, but little guy with big-time quickness, agility, speed, and make you miss. That's what I think of when I think of Puka. And then I also think of Kansas when they had Khalil Herbert there as well, mm-hmm. contractually mm-hmm. obligated to talk about Khalil Herbert. Uh, but it's like Puka... He could ball too, Bloom. Let's talk about him. Yeah, Puka's a weapon. You know, we'll talk about JV and Hawkins when we get to Atlanta and the NFC South. And I think that, and see, we'll talk about Tutu Atwell when we get to the Rams. I think it's clear, whether it's viable or true, that the NFL thinks that smaller players, typically below those thresholds that we subscribe to on offense, are are going to play. They're going to fit in this NFL. And Puka Williams is a 180 pound guy out there okay he's not really a running back that you're going to mix it up between the tackles but he's got quickness he's got speed he's got some character issues too that probably are mostly responsible for knocking him out of the draft but this is just a player you want a creative offensive coordinator to say we can see what did i say in the first show you need a player that teams have to honor on the jet sweep right Right. Puka Williams. I mean, you bring him in on those kinds of plays because he is a player that you have to account for with his natural playmaking ability, speed, and quickness. So I'm be very interested. One of the things that this sets up, sees it really you can take the draft recap show and some of it leads right to the preseason watch list, right? Preseason watch list, Travion Williams, Puka Williams, Chris Evans. Who's going to win out here and maybe who doesn't win out to the end up somewhere else? It is the Audible, our 2021 NFL Draft Recap Shows, brought to you by our friends at Underdog Fantasy. And our friends at Underdog Fantasy, they are blowing the doors off of best ball, the best ball world this year. And for a limited time, newer existing Underdog customers receive a one-time $25 bonus with a new deposit, which you are going to want to use for an entry into their Best Ball Mania 2. I feel like there should be an echo when I say like two, two, <laughs> two, best ball mania two contest. The grand prize is a cool one million and one dollars. But hurry, the twenty-five dollar bonus deal ends on Tuesday, May fourth. That's today. So make sure to sign up at the link in the description. We've got one down there, footballguys.com uh, to qualify for and use the code football guys. The code is football guys to qualify for your $25 deposit. Again, thanks to our friend at underdog fantasy for sponsoring these shows, Cleveland and everything they touch turns to gold. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Speaking of gold, we'll get to J O K in just a little bit, but Greg Newsom, their first round pick corner out of Northwestern feisty player in his own right. JOK is there, Jeremiah Uso Koromoa. And uh, he's basically a safety, even though they call him a linebacker. Think a little of a Z- Isaiah Simmons bloom. Yeah. Uh, Uso Koromoa had, what was it, a heart issue, right? Isn't that uh, Adam had that today? Something came up and teams looked into the medicals, but it was medicals why he fell. He could have been an option. Uh, hell, even at nine for the Denver yeah. Broncos. JOK was very, very highly thought of behind Micah Parsons, although there is another. Again, uh, we'll get to that a little bit later. Anthony Schwartz. Schwartz will be with you on this May 4th. 
uh, wide receiver of Auburn, James Hudson, offensive tackle, Cincinnati, another fourth rounder, Tommy Tagai, defensive tackle, Ohio State. I love those Buckeye defenders. Tony Fields, linebacker, West Virginia in the fifth. Also, Richard LeCount, the third, safety of Georgia. Sounds like a diplomat. And then Demetric <laughs> Felton in the sixth round. Now, there's wide receiver next to his name, and I know he's down at the Senior Bowl. Very versatile player. He's like a slot, Golden Tate, Josh Reed, but not not maybe as strong, as thickly built as those guys were. They tried him at running back, but they played him at wide receiver. Like, he's could move all around the formation. And again, like we're talking about with Puka Bloom, uh, you know, smaller guy, but can make some plays. Love the Browns draft. Love the Browns draft. Really, they're thinking like a playoff team, Sees. Yeah. They're thinking like a playoff team. And what they were able to do, Andrew Barry, this offseason in free agency, where are the holes? Are there any holes? Did they go into this draft like, say, our Steelers saying, well, we have to come away with this and we have to come away with this? No. No. The Browns could look at this draft much like the Ravens have in previous years. Again, the Ravens have holes, right? And say, who are the best players? Who are the players that we feel confident are going to hit? And wow. Wow. Let's start with Greg Newsom. Man coverage. Man, you need these guys. You can never have enough of these guys who just know how to check their guy. Competitive, right. right? You have Denzel Ward. Now they brought in Troy Hill. We'll see about Greedy Williams. But I, I, Greg Newsom is, a, I, this is, and you're looking ahead now. You're not just thinking about winning the division. You're thinking about Patrick Mahomes and the next time. And you don't him. worry if a guy's not working out because you mentioned with Greedy, right? Yeah. How many teams would be like, well, just give him some more time and we right. don't need a corner right. here. You put a second round in him, yeah. Yeah, exactly. No, Newsom. Uh, you get Owusu Koromoa. And see, the name that comes up here is Joe Woods. I know you're going to be able to speak on this. Because mm -hmm. with Owusu Koromoa, I think, there's some talk about the heart condition. There's some talk that teams already knew the heart condition wasn't an issue. I think that some teams are very reluctant when they don't feel like a player has a true home. But I look at the depth chart they have at linebacker. And they got Anthony Walker this offseason. I think Anthony Walker is going to be excellent in the middle of this defense. I think that they have a plan for him. And I know they said classic will linebacker. But what that means, see, when I hear classic will linebacker, what I mean, what that tells me is he's going to get to to diagnose and go he's going to get to he doesn't have to be thinking he doesn't have to be fitting in a rigid role you're going to unleash his athleticism i do think you're going to be able to use some of the deceptives you know he can rush the quarterback he can cover in the slot he, he can drop into cover into zone coverage he can he's a more than willing player versus the run uh when you see what else this team has assembled remember they have ronnie harrison grant delpit and john johnson at safety so you look at the different things that Joe Woods can do with these personnel sets. And they moved up for Owusu Koromoa, and they barely, they, they lost 24 picks. They moved down, and the thing is, they actually had to pick two picks after the pick they traded out of. This is a classic fantasy football move, fantasy football, right? If you know you have another pick coming up soon after the pick you trade down from, you're not really trading down to the pick you take in the trade. You're, you just get the guy, they would have taken Anthony Schwartz, right? Anthony Schwartz. Well, if you think Odell Beckham is dropping off a cliff, then go get Schwartz in your rookie draft because I think this is a pick. And Schwartz, again, speed. What do you see with these, these picks? Speed. You're adding team speed. And by the way, Wuso Koromoa, whenever Lamar Jackson's running, who can match him? Speed and move for move. J-O-K, okay. Schwartz, I mean, his speed has to be accounted for. Even if he's Troy Williamson, even if he's a guy, even if he's Ted Ginn, that frustrates you because for all of his speed, he sometimes is the obstacle to his speed mattering in the game. This is a team that brought back all six of their wide receivers, so they've got continuity there. But now if Odell Beckham, because what do you have in this offense? You have play action, shot plays. Well, if Beckham isn't able to make those plays, then you have Schwartz as someone that can be uh, a target for those. Um Oh, man, I love this pick. With This is the pick I wanted the Steelers to make, Cease. This is the pick. Hudson. Yep. Hudson. How much do you like this story? Converted defensive lineman. Okay? He has the feet. He has the movement skills. He has the mean streak. 
he's just new to the position. You know what I think might help a guy like that hit? Bill Callahan. They got a starting tackle, probably a good one, in the fourth round. Crazy. Because they understand their strengths as an organization. They understand they didn't need to swing for a single like the Steelers did with their fourth round tackle. Uh, Tommy Togiai. This guy is just a, a, a thorn in your side, basically, right? So it's a fourth-round pick. You have an upside pick. Now you have a guy that's just going to give you those snaps, those energy snaps. As a defensive tackle, he's going to be excellent against the run. There's something there that can be developed as a penetrator, as a pass rusher also. Fourth-round pick. You like this. They trade down, uh, and they end up getting the Lions fourth. This isn't just a fourth round pick. This is the Lions' fourth round pick. So you're talking about an, you know those picks at the beginning of the third day that teams want to trade up to. Those picks at the beginning of the third day that teams reset their boards and say, "Oh, how did Jabril Cox fall or whoever?" The Browns move down 40 spots and get the Lions' fourth round pick. How much of the Lions like Derek Barnes? Uh, they get Fields, who's just a good seek and destroy player against the run. I think he's going to improve their special teams. Uh, LeCount, you said, you know, he's got some range, another big program player, maybe a glue player that can fill a couple of different spots in the secondary. And then Felton. I, I don't understand. I Felton is more of a fourth round pick to my eyes. He'd be one of those early day three guys. That's what yeah. I thought when you get past Friday and you're like, oh, Felton's right there. He'll go. I would think Naeem Hines without the solid rocket booster, you know, but can play a very similar. And it's not that he's slow. It's just Naeem Hines has outstanding, outstanding straight line speed. Felton doesn't quite have that, but he can play a similar role in an offense. Felton, you can't touch him in a phone booth. Yeah, he's got more of those quicks. And I think you may see him boost the return game. So uh, just I know we don't do draft grades here, but they would be getting a, a very high grade. Because this is a team that I think drafted correctly for where they are in the arc of their growth as a team, where they are as far as their roster, where they are as far as the opponents they need to overcome to get to the next level in the AFC. So they make a Browns fan out of us yet, Cease. Bloom, you're going to spark a rant in me. Not that yeah. I already don't have enough WNBC stuff to yeah. think about, but um, don't be that guy that comes out because everyone tries to be kitschy right social networking i gotta stand out give me those likes don't be that guy that's like you can trade a grade a draft for three years yeah. you know it's the self-assured sniff like hot take like guys guys listen you can't really grade a draft for three years yes you can moron now, does it mean the grade holds or this is whoever they'll be? Obviously, they need to actually flipping play. But you can look at who they got, where they got them, the value provided within those picks, how it fits in with the entire roster building. There are ways to grade this. There are ways to look at this and see if a team did good or not. I understand that before the draft, we have mock drafts 100.0. Like, it's ad nauseum mock draft left and right. And then after the draft, we get draft grades. Who did what? And then the snobby guy. And <laughs> there's nothing like the snobby guy that comes in and is like, no, you just can't grade it. You just can't. Okay, then why just randomly generate names and that's who you drafted? Because you can't grade a draft, right? Mm -hmm. Just pick whatever. Number one, Jacksonville, that doesn't have to be Trevor Lawrence because you can't grade a draft, so what the hell? could be anybody. Hell, put Felton number one overall to the Jaguars. I don't know. You can't grade a draft, right? <laughs> Let's not be stupid, okay? Let's not be ridiculous. You can grade it. Doesn't mean it's the world. Uh, everything revolves around it. Anyway, I'm sorry. I wanted to actually talk about Marvin Wilson here because undrafted for the Browns, I'm actually surprised he felt he wasn't terrible at the senior bowl. I think maybe Quinn Miners was roughing him up a little bit. And maybe people are like, wow, this D3 guy. But I didn't think Marvin Wilson would fall. Yeah. Undrafted Bloom. Yeah, and they went out and gave him about $200,000, I think. And that's the guy here that you look at. And it's exactly what you should be doing with your UDFA budget. Again, Cease, what's this common theme? Where would he have been ranked at this time last year? I don't know. Second-day pick? Certainly an early third-day pick. Yeah. So 
you see what you can do. You know, this is a team with some turnover, a defensive tackle. Not that they're hurting for players there, but uh, Ogunjobi's gone. Sheldon Richardson's gone. Uh, so, yeah, there's opportunity there for Wilson. And whew, AFC North, this is going to be a must-see division. Unless you're a Steelers fan, see, it's time to go to Neurotic Steelers fan. <laughs> That is time, and the time is here. So let's talk about it. Uh, you know, in, in going through my mock draft, my one and only mock draft, I was like, it's cute. Everyone's putting running back to the Steelers. I don't think I did. I think I went in a different direction. But I said, eh, here's everyone's going to say Steelers go with the running back. And they did. Najee Harris, uh, much to the Dolphin chagrin, who wanted – one of their big two or big three, depending on who you talk to. Uh, but Najee Harris goes to the Steelers. Everyone will look at his size bloom and they'll think Derrick Henry. He's not Derrick Henry. He doesn't run like Derrick Henry. Now, I'm not saying he's Ron Dane, like a dainty big man, which is kind of always weird when you think about right. it. He's more Josh Jacobs, you know, sure. like, and this, I'm, I'm not, you and I usually kind of lament over Steelers picks and then they, you know, they'll turn out and we'll be like, man, eh, okay. But, uh, you know, this one, all right, for me, Javante Williams would have been a better pick, uh, especially if you want to bully people, as the Steelers may want to do with an aging quarterback or Mason Rudolph, for the love of God. Uh, all right, let's get that taste out of my mouth. Let's talk about baby Gronk in the second round, Pat Fryermuth. Okay, uh, you know, moving there as a weapon, moving forward, moving on from Ben after this season. What can baby Gronk do with that size and that my ball mentality? We'll see Kendrick Green, guard, Illinois, Dan Moore, offensive tackle, Texas A&M. There you talk about him. Buddy Johnson, another Aggie. Isaiah Loudermilk, very interesting player. Like when you think of Steelers taking DNs, standing them up, rushing the passer, Loudermilk is a player to keep an eye on. So I like that. Quincy Roche, sixth rounder. Uh, should have gone off the board in the third round. So another interesting pass rusher player that you can plug and play with the Steelers. We'll see what they get. Always trying to get after the quarterback. I like Trey Norwood, cornerback from Alabama. And then Presley Harvin, uh, who was yeah. the first African-American punter to win the Ray Guy Award. I actually talked to Presley uh, about a month ago, Bloom. Mm -hmm. uh, so, hey, he's a 260-pound punter, and he can launch him. So... There you go, Steelers. Let's let's do this. Yeah, use your last pick of the draft on a punter. Look, the Steelers are pretty straightforward here in the way they made these picks. You know, they're taking players that are from big schools. They're taking players that have been generally highly regarded their entire career. Um, I don't want to say playing it safe. That might be oversimplifying it, but they're basically playing it safe. Uh, Najee Harris. What creates a running game? Does a running back create the running game, or does the offense? The in Matt Canada's, they're going to be a zone running team. They don't want to be a finesse offensive line. They were a finesse offensive line last year, and they very much course corrected to say no. Now, part of that is you've got Chooks, Akor for and Zach Banner as your starting offensive tackles. They, I think, have one start between them. Ben Roethlisberger looked like a player who did not want to get hit last year. Yeah. Now you say you establish the run and back him off. Well, I mean, Harris can only do so much. Like you said, Cease, he's a big back, but he's a big back with good feet. He's a big back who can find that one move to maximize what he can get. He's not truly a power back, but that's not a bad thing. He's a great pass catcher. You can probably even use him detached from the formation. He's that good, even though his size, you wouldn't necessarily peg him as that. We'll work on pass pro. He's a classic three-down back. He's a classic three-down running back. And for fantasy, you like that. And for fantasy, even if the holes aren't there, even if he's averaging sub four yards a carry, he's going to rack up catches. He's going to rack up touchdowns. This team is still going to be, have a good defense to give them short fields. So the production will be there. You know, it's not necessarily something that's going to shoot him to the moon as a top five pick at running back because of the offensive line. And then, by the way, Mason Rudolph got signed to a one-year extension. Oh, my God. They really, they really like him, Cease. They really, really like him. So, you know, it's a by-the-book pick. It's a by-the-book pick for them. I you know, Other teams that need an offensive tackle, like the Bears go get Jenkins, you know, Steelers say, we're fine. We're fine. 
Friar Muth. Well, we kept comparing him to Heath Miller. I guess we brought it on ourselves. Okay. Okay. He's a solid player. Jesse James plus. That's why they didn't go get Jesse James, right? They're like, we don't need to get Jesse James. We can get the new Jesse James. All right. Okay. A solid player. You hope he becomes Heath Miller. Heath Miller was a player who added all these wonderful incremental gains and a very good, robust offense. Firemuth, I don't know. I, I just He'll be solid as a blocker. He'll be solid and functional as a receiver. Um, there were other players there. Uh, some of those other players were centers, and they get green, kind of green. You, watch his video. Oh, boy. Yeah. They, I, could, I, understand, I understand exactly why the Steelers were like, that's our guy. That's our guy at center. You know, yeah. I mean, he, he's, he's, they were asking this morning on Twitter, is he your favorite wrestler as a kid growing up? I don't know what it was for you. For me, it was Junkyard Dog. Who was it for you? Junkyard, okay. Yeah, it was. was it, who was it for you? Uh, it was probably Hulkamaniac. Yeah, I mean, if, if it wasn't Junkyard, it was Snooperfly Snooka. It was one of the two. But Junkyard Dog, I mean, that's what you're getting with Green. And what you like about Green, again, zone running, taking away that finesse part of the offense and replacing it with a dude who really loves to get after it and can get to the second level and is an athlete. So he's, he's mean, he's strong, and he's an athlete. He's excited to play for the Steelers. Like that pick. Maybe my favorite pick of the draft. You go down the breast. You get a couple of A&M guys. Moore is solid. You know, Moore is the kind of tackle I'm fine with as my swing tackle. Okay, but if you're going an extended period in the season with your swing tackle, it's like driving on your spare tire. Well, eventually you have to do something about that. Right? Right. right. So, okay. Okay. I mean, if Banner gets hurt again, if a core four is not up for it. I mean, they also have Joe Haig. So, see, we could easily be talking about a Steelers offensive line with Moore and Haig very quickly. But either way, Ben Roethlisberger is going to have to get the ball out quickly. Um, when you look at the edge rushers in our division, it ain't pretty. Uh, Buddy Johnson, I mean, see, couldn't you watch Buddy Johnson and say, that's a Steelers guy again? Like, yeah. All of these picks, you can say, that's a Steelers kind of guy. Buddy Johnson gets after it. And you could easily see him as a replacement for Vince Williams. You know, maybe not a guy who's going to stay on the field for three downs, but is going to add so much energy, a downhill attacker, loves the clash. And Buddy Johnson's going to do that for you. And then they trade a 2022 fourth for Isaiah Loudermilk. And the only way I can really defend this pick is if you look at Loudermilk's body type. He looks like a classic Steelers 3 4 end. <clears throat> it's Clark Higgins. I, I thought for sure. I was like, because I watched Loudermilk for the Broncos just to write about him, not for the actual team. But I was like, he looks like Clark Higgins to me. Well, he looks like one of those players that they have a plan for. This sees back in the day when the 3 4 defense or 3 4 defense looks weren't as common, the Steelers could just pick these players off. But that's not true anymore. I mean, there's a reason Loudermilk was still available. He just doesn't offer a lot of ceiling. I think one of the words I saw to describe him cease was worker bee. He's a worker bee. <laughs> okay. Picking a fourth? Giving up a fourth? I mean, they apparently they see that they have a lot of comp picks coming. That's why you may see the Steelers make a few moves in free agency because now we're past the deadline uh, where those pickups don't count against the free agency comp pick formula so they see hey we're going to get some comp picks let's go ahead and just use one in this class to get somebody who can be some good depth at defensive end but i think that's always going to be in the nfl roche like you said uh played opposite uh, uh jalen phillips uh transferred from temple uh you know again a guy a leader energy football character ceiling i mean you know not so sure but hey alex highsmith hit norwood a little bit more of a Swiss Army guy, and then you take a punter, who was clearly the one good punter, draftable punter. You hope you're not thinking ahead, thinking we want to improve our punter. But certainly, I think if Mason Rudolph's the quarterback in 2022, having a good punter is going to come in handy. Undrafted free agent for the Pittsburgh Steelers include Isaiah McCoy from Kent State. And in four games last year, because that's all they had, uh, McCoy was first team all Mac. Let his team is receiving explosive 13 of his 16 career receiving touchdowns of 20 yards or more. Don't worry. He drops the ball, but still <laughs> got a big play guy and Isaiah McCoy put a pin in it and watch him bloom from the Steelers undrafted free agents who stands out to you. Yeah. They didn't get a corner in the draft. Do you remember they released even Nelson and yeah, we'll see who's going to play corner on the starting defense. 
they didn't use a pick on one. I know they got Norwood. I don't know that he really projects as a corner. So where is your silver lining? Is this team cornerback and offensive tackle are not good spots to have holes? Cease. You know, if you tell me, oh, we got a hole at guard. You know, we have a hole in our run. We don't have a good run stuffer on the defensive line. Uh, they did get Shakur Brown, Sparty. Um, and again, what you like, maybe undersized, but click and close. See, so I remember when we would go to the All-Star Games, when we were watching those one-on-ones, click and close. Do you click and close? Do you see something and your body instantly reacts and you react validly from what you see? That's Shakur, Shakur Brown, sorry. Um, and th- there's some upside there. So I, I like him. I look forward. I expect him to make the team. I wouldn't be surprised if he sees snaps this year, uh, which is good for him. Maybe not good for the Steelers. Ah, it's good for us to get this back going again, Bloom. You mentioned we started this show. It started with a draft recap with me saying, welcome back on the very first <laughs> show and then slamming baseball in like the first four minutes of the show. Uh, ah, baseball, put you to sleep. So some things never change in 16 years 16 seasons of the audible and we are here for you we'll be back tomorrow we will have east for you nfc east up first then afc east continuing on down the row until we finish of course with the afc west on thursday so everyone again check out our youtube channel make sure you know like comment share subscribe hit that notification bell so that you never miss a vid and if you're in the live chat here make sure to also leave a comment and leave us that like please that helps us grow the channel and youtube algorithms it puts us in people's recommended uh in case they're not aware of the channel so thank you guys for helping us grow our youtube channel if you're listening on apple music or spotify thank you for listening to our podcast as we get tons and tons of listeners there as well and love talking about football, love recapping this 2021 NFL draft. He's Sigmund Bloom. You follow him on Twitter at Sigmund Bloom. I'm at Cecil Lambie. The show is at the audible everyone. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned and stay frosty.